Hello, everyone, and welcome back. As you can see, we're streaming the DrupalCon live here in Belgium, and I must say, it's really fun. But also thanks to all of you for being here and making this happen online. I have also to thank my employer, DropSolid, for contributing and letting me contribute to Drupal. DropSolid also helps by sponsoring DrupalCon and Drupal Dev Days in 2022. So certainly put that in your agenda. It's going to be an in-person event that's really, really cool. Come and visit the beautiful Ghent in Belgium. In the Dries note, Dries was talking about composable architecture, and that made me very happy. I personally, and also at DropSolid, we are sharing this vision of the future. We see this happening with our clients too. That's why we made our open digital experience platform so much more than a CMS. The DropSolid digital experience platform makes it easy for marketeers and developers to deliver compelling, efficient, multi-channel user experiences. Apart from CMS, it provides marketing automation, personalization, multi-cloud deployment and connectivity. We even have an integration hub to facilitate all this. Our Contrib improvements on Layout Builder enable users to create successful online experiences that engage visitors. Before this keynote, I want to share one anecdote. I think it was around 2007 that I was looking for an image gallery in PHP. I used to be a COBOL developer for a bank, so I, I didn't know very much about the web, and I'd been playing with PHP 4 for some time. I installed Drupal 4 and got it working, and I tried to make a photo gallery, but I didn't figure out how to get it on. I also tried Coppermine Image Gallery, but in the end, I just went for some custom code that generated thumbnails. The initiative Easy Out of the Box could have really pulled me in then. Luckily, a year or two later, I took a job where there was also a Drupal multi-site with a lot of Perl scripts, and then things got serious for me. The point I want to make here is that these initiatives, they determine if people get into Drupal or not. A new theme, project browser, the GitLab acceleration, easy out of the box, decoupled menus, and all the other initiatives, they impact the lives of real people. So the people you are about to see, Perina Veto, Callum Clarkson, Taryn Almendaris, Lee Rowlands, Griffin Heels, Emily Nouveau, Christina Comillas, Chris Wells, and Tim Lehnen are some of the people changing the lives of many. Give them a warm emoji applause, please, because they deserve it. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Gabor Hoichi, and I'm going to be the MC for today's Initiative Leads Keynote. And this Initiative Leads Keynote uh, came from a concept from Angie Byron. And uh, her idea was that it's great to see all the progress and all the value that we are delivering from the Dries notes, but it would really be great to see the people behind all of these great things that we are doing because the people behind them are first of all really fantastic and really diverse and are all around the globe. And they also uh, work on very interesting things when you see like what's coming out of uh, Claro or Layer Builder, you don't even think about all of the details that people need to work on behind the scenes. And it's really great to get a glimpse into the problems that they are solving, into how our different initiatives work inside, how they make decisions, how they decide uh, what's going to be built and what's going to be researched. And there's a lot of things that we'll, uh, that we'll not see in uh, the different sessions at DrupalCon that may not be apparent that we are working on behind the scenes. So here, you, uh, in this session, you will hear about how events are being handled or how the diversity and inclusion group works. So there's a lot of things that, that our fantastic people are working on. And this initiative provides you an insight into who these people are and how they work from themselves. So the lineup for today is Chris Wells going to talk about Project Browser and how they are making decisions. Emily Nouveau and Christina Chumilas will talk about Easy Out of the Box and specifically how they work on uh, accessibility challenges there. Taryn will talk about Drupal diversity and inclusion and will um, let you... Uh, let you be involved and have some call to actions for you. Tim Lennon will do a deep dive into one specific area of the GitLab uh, initiative, contribution recognition. 
Pierina Veto will update us about the Promote Drupal initiative. Uh, Kaleem Clarkson will give us an update about the event organizers working group. And then Lee Rollins and Griffin Heels will talk about the Box Mesh initiative. So I, think, I think this is a really great lineup. And with this, I'd like to hand it over to Chris Wells for Project Browser. Thanks so much, Gabor. I want you to think back. And for some of you, this may be way back. And for some of you, this might be yesterday or today. Think back to how you first came across Drupal. You read about it or heard about it. And maybe you were scouring the internet to solve some specific problem. And eventually you decided that Drupal was going to be the solution. Or maybe not even that. Maybe you just decided it was worth spinning it up and seeing if it could work. Can you picture a moment like that? Or maybe can you even remember the exact one? And then you did it. You stumbled through the database setup and set some passwords and got it. Congratulations, you installed Drupal. Ah, accomplishment. And then perhaps that was short-lived because now what? Stop and freeze yourself right here in this moment in time. And if you need to, empathize with either the past you or put yourself in the shoes of some newcomer to Drupal. Now what? Dries did this for a good long while and came to the conclusion that we needed an answer to this question. To quote the project brief of the project browser, quote, one of the very first things nearly all new users attempt to do is find and install contributed modules. And today, finding and installing modules requires too many steps. Some steps require you to leave your Drupal site and navigate to drupal.org. Other steps require technical skill like using Composer on the command line. And our goal is to make it easier to find and install modules for, for people that are one, new to Drupal, and two, that are site builders. In short form, Dree says, the project browser makes it easy for site builders to find and install modules. And there's many software marketplaces out there, and technically we have our own right now on Drupal.org, but we wanted to bring this experience right into your Drupal site. The current paradigm is this, the shopping experience for iOS and Android apps, it's right there on the phone. Same with the Chrome Web Store or a WordPress install, but Drupal's experience is not right there in Drupal. So I, like others, saw Dries' tweet about the first project browser meeting. It was the opportunity to get in on the ground floor of a new initiative and contribute, and something I've wanted to do for so long. So I jumped right in, just like many others did. Ron Northcutt volunteered to co-lead the initiative with me, and when stepping back, Leslie Glynn jumped right in to take his spot, securing the important role of the site builder in guiding this initiative's direction. Taking inspiration from marketplaces out there, Matt Grasmick jumped right in, and he rapidly developed an initial prototype, snagging data from Drupal.org's unofficial API. And with input from Tim and Neil at the association, we created a future-proof plan for a supported endpoint. And Matt worked with the association to come up with a plan that not only helps us, but helps the association by giving a head start on migrating Drupal.org to Drupal 9. And with some of Matt's urging, Wim Lears jumped right in and helped write some of these migrations. So I ask, are you interested in coding that digests APIs? Are you interested in Svelte as a front-end framework? There's a place for you. But of course, when you pull data from Drupal.org, then the project's success is only as good as the data on Drupal.org. So from our committee of site builders, Amy June Heinlein jumped right in, and she worked on a new proposed template for project descriptions. Are you passionate about the quality of the content on Drupal.org and want to help us clean it up? There's a place for you. Andrew Olson jumped right in to help collate data about our modules while our site builder subcommittee continues to work on the project content types information architecture on Drupal.org. Bob Snodgrass leaned on his local Drupal meetups to help us collect information about everyone's go-to modules. Did you know there are over 47,000 projects on Drupal.org? If you like data science, there's a place for you. And then seeing the need for real user research and polished design, Jillian Chuka, Hillary Prager, and Divya Mangadu, on loan from the Automatic Updates Initiative, they jumped right in. And they built some newer, fresher designs, still works in progress, for the future of the project browser. Are you interested in providing a modern UX to site builders? We have a place for you. 
Rajab Nath Shah has been instrumental by jumping right in and working with the prototype and filing issues and bugs. If you like managing workloads, clarifying work, project management, there's a place for you. We need more. We need more folks to jump right in. If you're eager and excited by this initiative or anything I've mentioned so far, please come and find us in the Project Browser Slack channel. And coming up after this is our contribution event, where we'll be discussing categorization of modules on Drupal.org, as well as the project page information architecture. It's a perfect opportunity for us to get feedback for those of you new to Drupal while you snag some contribution credit. That's what we need. We need the newcomers. So the water's fine. The pool has plenty of room. Much of this work has only just begun, and we need project maintainers and Drupal newcomers alike to bring their perspectives as we relook at the project pages. So jump right in. We're here, and we have a place for you. Thank you, Chris. That was great. So as you can see, uh, at, uh, the Project Browser Initiative just started in April, and people that wanted to help, they came in and they got involved. So if you are interested in either of these initiatives or the ones that we are not covering today, show up and offer your help and you'll see the one, maybe wonders can happen. Our next uh, initiative is Easy Out of the Box. Emily and Christina will talk about it. Thank you, Gabor. I'm Christina Chumillas, and as you might have heard during the regionals, we are trying to get um, several improvements to Drupal 10. Uh, but what is actually easy out of the box? Um, the initiative is composed of three important features for editors. Uh, the previous initiatives, Claro, Layout Builder, and, and Media. And our goal is to uh, make the editorial experience clear and empowering from the moment that the Drupal is, is installed. Um, one of the key things is actually who is part of these initiatives. Uh, it's uh, the maintainers uh, of the three pre previous initiatives and many other contributors, and plus a huge help from people like Amy June or Jessica Leila, who are actually helping a lot, uh, coordinating the work and organi organizing meetings. Uh, and this is really, really helpful. Uh, today, I'd like to talk about how integrating accessibility on the process can improve things for everyone, and especially how it helped uh, other fields like it actually happened in Claro. But first, what is Claro? Most of you probably know, but just in case, it's a new administration theme that will replace Seven. It was designed based on the new Drupal design system with accessibility in mind. And it's changing a few things on the UI, it's uh, refreshing it, and it's uh, right now still experimental uh, until we get to, to Drupal 10. And about the story that I was talking about accessibility, we uh, actually started the Claro project in a country uh, project. Uh, well, actually in Git happened then in a country project. And we had uh, very few rules and we took in, iterated over uh, issues and component changes, which left a lot of color, uh, colors in the code, really difficult to track. Basically like 50 shades of gray. And we have accessibility reviews uh, in a lot of the steps, actually, uh, like some of you might remember or might have seen uh, the design of the green focus states for Claro. But at some point, uh, there was a huge review issue, uh, um, accessibility review, and an issue was created uh, for, to fix several places we didn't have, where we didn't have enough contrast. And then it triggered like a design discussion about organization and color naming conventions, and we completely changed it. We added a new gray color scale already that it's been already committed. So it improved accessibility, but at the same time, it changed the whole design system color strategy, and it also changed the code implementation. So it really helped a lot on other places. And hi, I'm Emily Nuvo, and I'm going to talk about how uh, accessibility feedback improved Layout Builder. Um, so it was really helpful for us to uh, receive the accessibility feedback that we did. And uh, 
When we started out, like with most ideas, we had goals for where we wanted to take the user interface design. So um, it was exciting to say that everyone's feedback led it to a better result. Uh, briefly, what is Layout Builder? It's a content editing tool for building page layouts for both splash pages and uh, content type layouts. Uh, Layout Builder is stable and in core, uh, and it allows you to create these uh, content editing designs. So here's one of the earlier mockups for Layout Builder. The background was grayed out with the intention of helping users focus on the layout content, and everything was focused on visual editors and dragging full content blocks between different regions. I was very much focused on the visual experience. Uh, and here's the current editing experience in Layout Builder. Uh, this is an example of the text-based move tool that was added after rounds of discussion, feedback, and different design iteration. Uh, this allows editors to listen to descriptions of the sections, regions, and content, and move the content to its proper location. Uh, and we also added a checkbox to remove the content preview. So before you would see content preview of each of the blocks that you're moving, uh, but after accessibility feedback, we removed that um, and offered that option for people. So the interface is tighter and less distracting um, after many people comment about the distraction, the difficulty in dragging large blocks around. So who can contribute to easy out of the box? Uh, we need designers, we need UX people, We definitely need accessibility um, focus and we need marketing, we need documentation, um, social media support, and of course developers. And we have weekly meetings. Uh, so join us in Drupal Slack. We're at Easy Out of the Box and we meet um, at Mondays 9 a.m. Pacific time, uh, 12 p.m. Eastern time. Thank you. Thank you. I really like this story of how uh, how even the smallest pieces of Claro and Leo Builder would consider accessibility and how it improves the usefulness of the tools for everybody involved. Thank you. So next up is Taryn, and she's going to talk to us about the Drupal diversity and inclusion team. Thanks, Gabor. Hola, everybody. Bonjour. Konnichiwa. Guten Tag. And as we say in Dallas, Texas, where I live, howdy. I'm here to talk to you all today about the Drupal Diversity and Inclusion Initiative and how it helps us to build a stronger Drupal community. If you can, share where you are watching from today and your local greeting. Howdy is mine. So. Uh, as we said before, my name is Taryn Almendares. My pronouns are she, her. I am the current lead of the Drupal Diversity Initiative and on Drupal.org, I am Nine Lives Black Cat. I'm a front-end developer. Um, and I'm gonna tell you about our amazing team that we have in Drupal Diversity. So right now, our leadership team consists of five people from all over the gender spectrum. Uh, Alana Burke, Alex Laughlin, Alex McCabe, Elliot Ludwigson, and Tara King is our advisory leader. We are small but mighty. But we're all US-based. We'll talk about that. We have a number of initiatives within the DDNI initiative. Um, some of them are highlighting and supporting diversity at Drupal events, uh, our contrib team, the resource library, presentations, career support, and I'm gonna go over each one of these. This is just an overview. So for the contrib team, we have the gender field in open demographics, uh, virtual contrib day, and one of the most exciting things, it was just announced yesterday that the first draft of a resource guide for best practices in diversity and inclusion for contributions and mentoring, lots of words, is going to be funded and supported by the Urban Institute and led by Josh Miller. We really appreciate those contributions and all y'all's help. In our DDI resource library, there are tons of opportunities for people to get education about community members and topics that you're not aware of. Sometimes questions about diversity and inclusion can be a little sticky and awkward. We have a resource library, so you don't have to feel quite as awkward. And one of my favorite things uh, is the Drupal Speaker Diversity Initiative. Um, if you are from an underrepresented or a marginalized group in the Drupal community, we actually have a training that you can go through uh, to help you speak at camps and cons. 
you we need to support members of our community that maybe haven't done it before. It's done in collaboration with excellent Drupalers like Amy June Heinlein of Canopy Studios, and it, you can also help with that training. In our DDI Careers Initiative, that's a space for people to come together and talk about jobs, whether you want to post jobs, find jobs, discuss jobs, job postings, and ask about feedback for your job postings, we're there to help. Um, we also give each other advice about work, careers, and for companies to have Drupal diversity and inclusion related resources. So the next part is that we're gonna talk about our work in 2021 that we've done so far. This is my first year as the initiative lead. It's been really great. So here are some of the projects that we've worked on. So we are having a shift in gears. Um, we are walking the walk and improving it as we go. Uh, we started in 2016, uh, we've grown and changed and now we have a different approach. We're starting to have more sustainable practices, supportive systems and reproducible procedures because that's how inclusion and equity really get done. One of the most exciting things from this year is that in August, we held our very first DDI camp. Um, it was dedicated to uplifting voices of underrepresented and marginalized groups in the Drupal community and ways to support them. We had like a TikTok dance number. We had a lot of talks about neurodiversity uh, and we had Fatima uh, Khalid, like she presented one. You can actually see those talks at drupaldiversity.com initiatives ddi-camp-2021. So in quarter four of 2021, we're gonna shift focus. Uh, we understand that this has been a very challenging time for members of our community, um, both from the issues that we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, as well as, you know, life is hard, work is hard, living in a pandemic is very hard. Um, we are going to focus on building genuine connections in the community and helping people to heal. Um, often our meetings had been focused around, okay, here's this work that we have to do and who can do it. We are going to be doing more social and bonding activities and focusing on people and their needs first. You've already got a lot of work that you've got to do at work and it's kind of sticky to ask you to do more work on top of the other contribution work that you're doing. So, and my very favorite thing about this is that we are going to have regional leads. Now, like I said, our team is very US based and we've gotten feedback from people saying, well, Inclusion and equity is important to us, but why are you trying to shove us in a US lens? So if you can, and if you are interested, please sign up to be a regional lead. It is important that we uplift the voices of people that are actually experiencing things on a day-to-day -day basis and how it happens in your region and your part of the world. By doing this, you'll help us to understand the challenges of diversity, inclusion, and equity for non-US locations. Um, it's five o'clock in the morning right now in Dallas, much different than what time it is where y'all are in Europe, but we also are gonna have leads from the African continent, East Asia, South Asia, all over the place. So if you wanna speak up for your community, please join us, we need your voice. And then another really cool thing is that if you share a video to the hashtag DDI Stories Europe on Twitter or whatever social media platform you'd like, we would love to hear your stories. Share your stories with us about the challenges and successes that you've had. Um, I think it's really important when we talk about inclusion and equity, talking about the work, but also the ways that you've done great with your community and so that we can all learn from each other. So there's various places that you can find us. We don't have a buff, uh, sorry, we don't have a booth at DrupalCon Europe this year just because of capacity issues, but there was a buff that happened this morning, this morning for me, this afternoon for y'all. Um, we are also in the Drupal Slack diversity-inclusion channel and a bunch of other channels. And we meet every other Thursday. Today we'll be meeting and in two weeks from now we'll be meeting. You can also sponsor us on the opencollective.com address. Thanks so much. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye. That was great. Uh, I really enjoyed DDI Camp. Such a great job. Thanks for pulling that together. Um, so next up is Tim Lennon, and he's going to talk about a specific part of the GitLab initiative, contribution recognition of Drupal contributions. Awesome. Thanks, Gabor. Wonderful to be here with such great speakers. So from the Dries note, we heard about the DA's push to have more of our tools move to GitLab. But what will this mean for our most important innovation as a community, 
Drupal's contribution recognition system, a system that leads among all open source projects. I'll start with an overview of the value that system has brought to our project and to Drupal. When I say lead, I mean it. To my knowledge, we're still the only project with the insight to know how much of our contribution is sponsored, volunteer, or some combination. We have data going back to 2016 that helps understand where contribution in the ecosystem comes from, and that's crucial in our decision-making as a project. Other organizations have studied this problem space. Chaos, Internews, Finos, and the Apache Foundation have all defined or proposed metrics for what it means to be a healthy open source community, but we've been the first to act on measuring it. And now those organizations are studying us to better understand open source health. And we don't just track code contribution, which is the trap that many other projects fall into. We have measures of issue credit, which includes both code and non-code activities, but also recognition for financial support for creating Drupal promotional materials and for the contributor roles that people hold in the project as a whole and in their local communities. Under our current system, individual contributors can use the issue queue to attribute their contribution in these different ways with the comments they leave on the issue, all of which can be tabulated together to create the picture of contribution in our ecosystem. And these contributions are peer reviewed by maintainers, not granted purely by algorithm. We also lead the open source world by recognizing and rewarding the organizations who sponsor our key contributors by using contribution data to rank order the Drupal.org marketplace. This creates a true financial incentive for companies to give their staff time to contribute or to hire existing contributors who've been operating purely as volunteers. And let me be clear, we recognize individuals, but only rank organizations. Matthew Tiff recently wrote a blog post at this link, which summarizes research, which shows that individual leaderboards can lead to anxiety and even demotivation of contributors. So the Drupal Association only uses this data to create incentives on the organizational level and provide recognition individually. And most recently, we've added a new kind of individual and organizational recognition, contributor roles held by members of our community. Not only do these roles provide credit, but it allows us to see what all those roles are as you fill in that data. Positions of community leadership form organically and measuring them helps us know what keeps the Drupal ship afloat. So to you in the audience, I say, if you've acted in one of those roles as an initiative coordinator, a working group member, documentation editor, or any of the dozens of other contributor roles that the community has logged so far, consider updating your Drupal.org profile when you have a few free moments between sessions or after the closing ceremony. That information will become part of your individual Drupal.org contribution record and help the Drupal Association understand who holds all of these critical roles and how to support you better and how to encourage the next generation of contributors to take, to take on the same roles when and where they're needed. And if a company sponsors your time so that you're able to participate in these key areas of contribution, they'll be recognized as well, both with a log on their organizational profile and in the Drupal.org organization and marketplace listings. This is part of capturing the full picture of contribution across Drupal. But I said I would talk about our transition to GitLab. This recognition system depends on the custom tools we've built on Drupal.org. So won't we lose it if we change those tools? The answer is no, we actually have two potential paths we can take to preserve this capability, either directly in GitLab or with an integration. We've submitted an issue to GitLab with the support of their senior program manager for open source projects. This proposal suggests integrating our contribution feature into the GitLab feature set so that not only we can use it, but other open source projects can as well, a contribution that would go beyond Drupal. But that's not our only option. We could also build our own custom GitLab bot that would uh, integrate back to Drupal.org as the source of truth for the contribution log. So many third-party integrations for GitLab or GitHub work in this way, with a bot being triggered when a merge request is accepted or an issue is closed, etc. From there, we could continue to have a contribution record content type on Drupal.org that works similarly to what we have now, allowing users to attribute their contributions and allowing maintainers to peer review, peer review those contributions and accept them into the official record. We could keep things as they are in that sense and still use GitLab's tools. 
And you out there in the audience don't just have to wait for this to happen. While the Drupal Association is investing a lot of resources into this work, you can help too. If you know Ruby or are familiar with the GitLab code base, go to the link on the left and chime in with your ideas. If you're interested in the initiative more generally, join us in the Slack channel on the right. Whatever method we implement to preserve our ability to track contribution in the Drupal project, this will be essential to how we maintain a picture of a complete and diverse community and all the ways that you contribute. Knowing that this, Know that this is foremost in our minds as we work on our tooling transition and that your support of the Drupal Association directly makes this possible. So thank you. Thank you, Tim. Uh, it's really encouraging that we have these ways that we can carry on uh, contribution tracking. I think one of the biggest strengths of Drupal is that we have this central place where we contribute and we work on our code and build our community. Thanks. Thank you. And the and one more thing that we provide at this central place is promotional materials and help uh, for you to sell Drupal. And that's uh, part of our Promote Drupal initiative. And Pierina is here to talk about that. Hello, everyone. I'm excited to be here talking a little bit about the Promote Drupal initiative, our journey, the work we're currently doing, how you can get involved. And most importantly, I'm honored to be presenting on behalf of our initiative lead, Susan Dorgacheva, and all of our volunteers whom I'll be introducing shortly. A bit about me, my name is Pierina. I'm the training and Drupal community manager at Evolving Web. I've been in the community only for one year and nine days, and I don't have a technical background. So hopefully this talk will also help people out there looking for motivation to get involved in non-code contributions. Drupal is more than a project. It's a worldwide brand. Promoting it means growing that brand and improving Drupal's adoption rate. Drupal has been around for 20 years and is being used by top organizations around the world. But if we want the project to keep thriving, we need to communicate to non-Drupal folks what we can do for them and why we're great at it. How? Well, our ideal outcome is to create standardized Drupal marketing materials and stories that the worldwide community can use. We're talking about targeting marketing decision makers and not only a technical audience and staying relevant in a marketplace where our competition has strong product marketing. I want to tell you a bit about what we've done so far, our journey. How did it all start? Well, the initiative was officially launched on April 2018 at DrupalCon Nashville, and it's been sustained by a combination of community contribution and partially supported by the Drupal Association. In 2019, after collecting $76,000 in funds, the initiative completed a first phase, delivering, among other things, a white Drupal corporate video, a Drupal brand book with strategic messaging, the distribution of press releases, and a Drupal pitch deck. What's happening now? What we could call a second phase of the initiative is started this year. Tackling a marketing strategy for an international open source brand in a collaborative way can be a huge piece. So we went for a divide and conquer approach. We created dedicated working groups or subcommittees to tackle specific tasks. This has been a great way to pair volunteers according to their interests and set realistic goals that can be reached in six month cycles. These subcommittees are the evaluator, the Drupal ambassadors, the strategic initiatives, and coming soon, the social media committee. Let me introduce you to the Evaluator Marketing Committee, this amazing group of marketing directors, agency owners, and content creators have been sharing their industry expertise and marketing intelligence to improve the onboarding experience of evaluators on Drupal.org. They gather data from surveys and analytics and have started creating new copy and UX improvements. The Drupal Ambassadors, we represent almost every continent in the world and have one thing in common. We're all passionate about Drupal and active in our local communities. We want to produce marketing assets all Drupal Ambassadors out there can use to spread the word at events outside the Drupal universe. To start, we're developing content targeted at a technical audience. The third committee's goal is to generate interest around Drupal's strategic initiatives, both within and outside the community. 
They've been working closely with each initiative lead to understand their work and produce content such as slideshows, logos, and video interviews that highlight the innovation and new features on Drupal's roadmap. Who can contribute? Of course, anyone with a background in marketing, social media, content writing, graphic design, and SEO will have a lot to offer to this initiative. Overall, this is a great opportunity for non-coding contributors. So if you have the ability of capturing the value of Drupal into words, design, and video, we need your talent. Join us in getting the world as excited about Drupal as we are. Visit our Slack channel, Promote Drupal, if you have any ideas or requests. There we hold async meetings every month. You can also visit our page on drupal.org to access the existing materials and fill out the volunteers form to join a specific committee. Thank you very much. Gracias. Thank you. Uh, I really like to see that we have, that Drupal is so big that we have these initiatives. And now the initiatives are so big that we have these sub initiatives. Uh, both in Project Browser and here and elsewhere, and we, we can specialize. So you can really find your place if you're interested in contributing and being involved. Uh, the next initiative that we're going to cover is the Event Organizers Working Group. And I will give this over to Colleen to talk about that. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you, Gabor, so much for putting this together. Um, we know that uh, some of the initiative leads get their slides in last minute. So we really, really appreciate you dealing with the stress. Um, before we get going real quickly, can everybody put in the chat, you know, all the all you attendees, what was your first Drupal event? Please put that in the chat because we want to see what your first Drupal event is. So basically, the, the event organizers working group, our mission is to support um, community led events. So we want to know what is your first Drupal event. That's what we do. Um, that's what our goal is, is to, um, to help event organizers um, plan these events much, much, much better. So here we go. We see some Paris 2009, DC, Munich. See a lot of cool stuff over there. DrupalCon, Vienna. Um, these are the people, the event organizers working group. My name is Colleen Clarkson. I'm so excited to be a part of this working group. Um, they're awesome group. We had camp camp representation from all over the all over the globe, um, and really, if if you probably recognize the names here, and it was just such such a pleasure working um, with with everyone here, and and I really 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 have enjoyed meeting with them every single month. So, thank you all to the board members. We also have an advisory committee. These advisory committee members are key. These advisory committee members, um, they help us with all sorts of things. John, Rachel, Nico, uh, Antonoli, like you helped us so much. They attended these meetings and they basically provided us with a lot of expertise from um, Drupal, Drupal liaison, with Rachel, to Nico helping us out. He was at Drupal Cal. So it was really, really, really helpful to have them um, help us and be a part of the community. So, hey, if you are, don't have enough time to be a board member, you could always be an advisory um, an advisory committee member. So one thing that um, now kind of talking about some of the things that we've done, um, this is the Drupal events database. So hopefully, Tim, you can post that link for me. I'm really, really excited with this. Um, everyone go post your events. Uh, in collaboration with the Drupal Association, we created a one place, a, a, a one place shop for you to go view events. Get your events marketed. Um, you can post your meetups. You can post your trainings, important event dates. Everyone, go there now if you run a Drupal event and get them on there. We want to create a, a main main database. So, what's another initiative that we um, created? Gabor talked about subcommittees. Um, we have kind of our own little initiatives, the event organizers working group initiatives and the Drupal events database was the first one. We also have getting started with Drupal. The idea behind getting started with Drupal is that, hey, we all posted our events in, in, the, um, in the chat and it's a great opportunity for um, beginners to learn more about Drupal. So we created this committee. Suzanne's done a great job of creating kind of this um, 
unified slide deck and a presentation that can be used for organizers to introduce newcomers. And it's been a really, really great um, opportunity and it's already been at two different um, camps already. The other initiative that we have is the Drupal event platform. This is this is where I, I this is my baby. I'm hoping that we can build a platform and um, please show, share the URL there. So the Drupal event platform, um, JD Leonard, thank you. Shout out to JD Leonard. He's been leading this group. But our goal is to build kind of a Fleco ecosystem of modules to create Drupal event websites. We meet on the fourth Tuesday of every um, of every month at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And really, we're, we're getting ready to send out a survey to all of our event organizers to talk about um, what some of the feature sets are. So stay tuned for that. Last but not least, the event organizers working group board nominations and elections. As you can see here, there are three seats that are vacant. We need your help. We need your help. We want more people to join these lovely four people. There's going to be some continuity already. These lovely four people who are already going to be there. Nomination deadline is October 28th, 2021. So get your nominations in and expected time commitments. Not very long. It's, you know, one hour monthly board meetings, one hour, um, a public meeting, and then joining an initiative. So we really need some help here. Drupal events are critical. Um, how can you get involved? If, if, you can't be a board member. If you can't be a committee member, you can still join these monthly calls. We have a monthly call on Zoom so we can see everyone's face. I know it's been challenging during these last 18 months. So it's so great to get on these calls and really talk about some of the challenges that we're having and just really be able to vent with each other. Um, we have the organizer Slack. We have our newsletter. We have the Drupal issue queue. So yes, you can get involved. Drupal events are so critical for onboarding new people to the community. We need everyone's help. We want to build this ecosystem of resources. We want to promote these camps. And maybe at some point, maybe at some point, we get our events featured on Drupal.org homepage. Not to, not to throw any pressure on you, Tim, or anybody else. But anyway, that's what we're doing. Appreciate the time. Oh, so button. thank you, Kaleem. <laughs> I think the events group is really one that felt a lot of pain recently. And uh, so uh, it's great to see all of this energy coming from you. Thanks. And uh, next up is uh, the Bucks Mesh initiative, uh, which is also near and dear to my heart as much as all the others. Uh, and Lee and Griffin will talk to us about that. Fantastic. All right. Thanks, Gabor. And hi, everyone attending DrupalCon Europe. I'm Griff. And I'm Lee. And we're from Previous Next in Australia. And I'm here to teach you all about the Bug Smash Initiative. So what does the Bug Smash Initiative do, Griff? Well, we smash bugs in Drupal Core, Lee. It's right there in the name. Is it working? Well, as you can see from these charts, well, the charts don't lie, sorry. Nice. <laughs> um, a big shout out to our Bug Smash team members, Len Dude and Quiet One, for regularly collecting and tracking our stats. Yeah, they're great. Uh, how do I find out more about the initiative, Griff? Well, another member of the team, Mohit, just did an extended session on it. So if you missed that, you can just check out the recording. Yeah, I, I definitely will. Uh, so how, how do I get involved? Well, we do most of our work in the hashtag bug smash Drupal Slack channel. So please drop by and say hi. All right. Oh, yeah, I'm there now. Uh, what's the best way to help? Well, the first thing you can do is go to the Drupal core issue queue. Um, then if you filter bugs that you've created that are still open. All right. So I'm going to Drupal core uh, on the project page, click it on the bugs link, uh, go into an advanced search, put an image bugs created by me. Oh, wow. There's, there's quite a lot here. Um, yeah. 
Awesome. Well, the first thing you could do. Oh, I've read the wrong line. <laughs> okay, then go over that list and see if the, yep. any of the bugs are no longer relevant and close them. Make sure you tag them with Bug Smash Initiative. Congratulations, you've made a big contribution to Bug Smash and to Drupal. Yeah, I can see quite a few in my list that don't apply anymore. And, and oh, this one is a feature request. I can reclassify that. Fantastic. Reclassifying bug smashing too. So every little bit helps. There are quite a lot of open bug reports that are probably no longer relevant. Yeah, and I guess if there's more bugs that are no longer relevant, it makes it harder to find actual bugs. And we end up with duplicates instead of people creating uh, using existing issues. Bingo. So what other things can I do to help? Well, at Bug Smash, we run fortnightly meetings where we primarily hi highlight priorities and just update the wider team. As a few of the other initiatives have mentioned, these are run asynchronously, so it works for all time zones. And the next one is on next Tuesday, so you're more than welcome to join us. Yeah, I'll be there. Uh, do you need to be able to write code to help? Not at all, actually. I'm not a developer, and, but I'm still very involved in the initiative. I'm helping out with primarily with coordination and supporting new team members. Oh, well, that's good to know. Um, I am a developer. What sort of things can I do? Um, well, developers involved in the initiatives are primarily writing tests. They're re-rolling old issues and they're trying to rep reproduce bugs and then obviously fix them slash smash them. So. How do you identify what things to work on? Well, we also run weekly triage sessions, also asynchronously, where we try to identify bugs and breathe some life into old issues. So what does triage normally involve? Oh, lots of things during triage. Um, the team makes sure that issue summaries are up to date. There are steps to reproduce the issue. We look for duplicate items and close them. We're also reclassifying issues that aren't bugs, for example, like you did before as feature requests. Well, it sounds like there's something for everyone there. Uh, can you fix my personal bug? Hmm. Well, sometimes commenting on an old issue is all that it takes for taking, getting others to spring into action. But if you have things, specific things you want others to help with, this is a good place to find people to help. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Yeah, it really is. So please join us in hashtag bug smash if you're looking for a way to get involved in core contribution. We have tasks for all skill sets and levels. So is that bug smash with two words? Nope, all one word. Fantastic. I'll see you there. See you in there. Thanks. Thank you. Um, I was uh, almost sorry for the bugs. They were so nice. <laughs> yeah, um, we've, we've taken out the smash, just bugs. In this yeah, <laughs> such nice bugs. All right, uh, thank you. So this is the end of the initiatives that we've had time for this time. And uh, I, yeah, I think um, it was really great. If you want to be involved with these initiatives, they mentioned their Slack channel, so I collected them all together on this slide so you can find them at Project Dash Browser, Easy Out of the Box, Diversity Inclusion, GitLab, Promote Drupal Events, and Bug Smash. And you can follow at Drop Is Moving on Twitter for news about Drupal Core. And with that, we have some time left for Q&A. So I will switch to my chat tab here and hopefully bring on everybody else from all of the initiatives and we can do our Q&A. So I'm looking at my chat for any questions. There's certainly a lot of applause for bug smashing, certainly. Gabor, I saw a question earlier. Someone asked if I spoke uh, all of the languages that I did greetings in earlier. Do you? Uh, no, uh, non, je, je ne parle pas toutes les langues antérieures. Uh, J'étudie le français en le lycée et je peux lire un peu. Nihongo wa watashi no ichichi ga ikoku koko. Jibun de benkyo shimashita. Y puedo hablar también un poco, un poquísimo de español, porque todas las otras personas en mi familia hablan español. So, not all of them, yeah, also just French, yes. Japanese, and Spanish. 
That was nice. Um, <laughs> that was nice. Yeah, I've been involved with multilingual Drupal for a while, but I don't speak anything else than Hungarian and English. So that's interesting. Um, so Alexei asks, which modules do you use to store coordinates of events, geolocation or geofield, and your event platform, I guess? I'm pretty sure we're using geolocation, but uh, I'll double check with uh, my uh, Drupal Association colleague, Brendan Blaine, who helped build out that feature. And, uh, and we'll, we'll make sure we get you the right answer. Nice. Um, all right. Well, I've been scrolling back. There's all the events that people have been to. A lot of memories. What's the oldest one? What's the oldest event? Did you see anything up there? Did you see like, I thought I saw like 2006 somewhere or 2004 or something. Oh, Jurassic DrupalCon. Zeged was in there, <laughs> which was one of the one of the yeah, early ones for sure. DrupalCon Boston 2008, London Meetup 2007. Yeah. Very, very my, cool stuff. My what, first was your first, was, what was your first event, Kaleem? My first of, event was Drupal Camp Atlanta, obviously, but my non-Atlanta event was designed for Boston, uh, design, Drupal for Design, D4D in Boston, MIT. Such a mm -hmm. great event. Very cool. I help out a lot with D4D Boston, but my first Drupal event was Drupal Camp Atlanta, like back in oh. 07, 08, <laughs> something like that. That's cool. Yeah, probably at Georgia Tech, maybe. <laughs> yeah, UGA. I don't know. It was a while back. I noticed someone commented in there, is this uh, the, uh, are we reviving COD? And oh, the answer yeah. To that, the answer to that question is no, we are not reviving COD. Um, we are not, that is not our goal. Our goal is to provide something a lot more flexible. I love COD. We still actually use COD. So first off, shout out to the association, shout out to Jay Perry, shout out to everybody who did COD. That thing was awesome. Even back to what, D6. Um, but no, this is not going to be a, uh, you know, real life of, of COD. Be revival. <laughs> uh, so... Alexei asks, how credits are counted if we check both volunteering my own time and me at organization in an issue comment? Oh, that's a great question. So Alexei, we use that because we know that users, sometimes you get your like 20% time at work. You get to work on Fridays doing contribution or something like that. Um, and then um, you also decide, hey, I'm passionate about this. So I'm going to work late or I'm going to work on the weekend and I'm going to finish off this issue and do additional contributions. So you might be contributing both as an individual um, and uh, on sponsored time with your company, which is why you have the option to do both together. And so when we put those together in our analysis, we account for those like, is it just volunteer? Is it sponsored or is it both? And, the ch and all of our charts and tracking account for all of those different things. All right, uh, next one. Uh, with the Project Browser Initiative, if content editors are installing enabling modules in prod, how will we keep our code base in sync? Well, that is a very good question that we still need to answer. Um, and we're hoping that um, maybe you want to jump in and help us. Though uh, one thing that we are doing in our roadmap is we're uh, leaning a little bit on automatic updates initiative to help us solve some of those problems first. So in our sort of initial version 1.0.0 or, or MVP as we've been calling it, um, we are simply providing instructions for how to get the module installed via either Composer or Drush. Um, so we're, we're delaying the solution of that problem initially, uh, and then we're going to uh, look at um, where automatic updates lands because we are able to lean on and borrow a lot of their approaches in Project Browser. Yeah, I guess you could also make people use Project Browser and not in prod, and like when they're building their site in dev, and then they can install it there and then push it to prod. That could be an option. Mm -hmm. Work around the problem. Um, yeah, um, Fatima asked, what is COD? So that's the conference organizing distribution. 
I thought y'all were talking about fish, and I was very confused. There's also a fish, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we did have fish. a lovely fish logo. <laughs> it was yeah. a great logo. I, I loved everything about like the whole thing of it, you know. So I'm a little there's a little nostalgia in my heart for it. I'm sorry. No kidding. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it was great. Um, so Batty says she just arrived to Drupal Camp Belgium. It's so great to be with people. What will your next in-person event be? Well, I'll go first. Ooh, I think one. I think probably my next in-person, unless I go to uh, a local Portland meetup that happens sooner, is going to be DrupalCon Portland, which is coming up uh, in April of next year. We'll be back to the first in-person North American conference. So that's super, super exciting. Um, and I think even session submissions are open. So hopefully I'll see a lot of you out there there uh, there as well and uh, and speaking and joining us. And it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm excited. Yeah, April is going to be busy because Dev Days is also... Dev Days in April, Ghent at the same Ghent. time. Yep, absolutely. So for us in Europe, it's going to be a fun month as well. For sure. I think my, my first uh, in-person event, it's going to be hard to skip florida in what is it february hopefully everything is 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 better by then but for me uh i haven't been to Asheville yet see i'm wearing my my tennessee drupal camp chattanooga shirt i haven't been to the drupal camp Asheville, so i promised april that's going to be my first in person of that that's what's going to happen maybe drupal camp, actually so i think just going to go to all of them all at once <laughs> all the events singularity <laughs> Indeed. And then Jakub asks the question, which initiative do you believe has the most strategic position, the most important to ca take care of first? I would say all of them. <laughs> like, really, like all of them. I think we have a lot of great people uh, doing a lot, of, uh, a lot of amazing things. So you can find your place and you can do very important work wherever you end up, whichever initiative. It's going to be doing really important things for Drupal. See, he that was a softball answer. Mm -hmm. I'll go. I'll give you mine. Okay. He, he, he just took, you know, that's what we call coach speak in America, sports, where they don't really answer the question. I don't know. He sidestepped it. He sidestepped it. He <laughs> sidestepped it. So I'll pick something outside of my own because that, be, that wouldn't be right. Personally, I feel like the out of the box initiative is, in my opinion, the, the, that's just my personal opinion, the, the most important. You got to be able to um, use Drupal quickly and know how to use it right away. And that I think we've all seen that hilarious video of the person installing Drupal. That was one of the, the best videos. I think it was last year's DrupalCon where he's doing the demo of installing Drupal. It's hysterically hilarious, but also painful. So to me, uh, I, I think it's that one. I think Anyone that, uh, yeah, I think that being in the diversity and inclusion initiative, one of the, the, this has actually been like my home and the time that I've been in the Drupal community. My first event was Baltimore and I was very like nervous. It was my first like conference event ever going to professionally. Um, but it's just seeing like that everybody in that initiative contributes to so many different spaces in Drupal as a whole and so i do have to say like i think that all of them are equally important because i see the way like we all feed into each other so it's coach speak maybe kaleem but uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it is true though i think all these things pull together and like um you know the project browser example we had earlier and how they're um, working on the groundwork that's being laid with auto updates, right? Auto updates has to solve the problem of installing update packages and making sure they're secure. And that's more or less the same technical problem behind the scenes that the project browser is going to need to be able to do. So all these things build on each other. And I think the, the project leadership, Dries, the core maintainers, the initiative leads here, and everybody is doing like amazing work to communicate with each other and collaborate. And so that we don't have we don't have sort of competing initiatives that are sort of stealing resources from each other. Instead, we have things that build on top of each other, like one after the other. And that's that's always really great. Um, so yeah, I think that's super exciting. But I'm also going to give Kaleem's initiative a shout out because as we're able to return to in-person things, I think the events organizers working group is going to lead the charge here. And um, 
get that ground up uh, groundswell of local uh, local new Drupal people into our community, contributing, helping out, um, fostering business in local regions. I think it's going to be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I love um, that. That's my halfway coach speak of if like we need <laughs> to promote Drupal first and we need to get people here so ah. that. It's Agreed. easy out of the box. <laughs> so once we promote it and they say, okay, it's Drupal time. Now it's got to be easy out of the box. And then they get to that point where they need to install a module so they can use the project browser. And now they're kind of into it, right? So they're like, I need to learn more. So they go to some events, you know, and then they start using Drupal and they find all these bugs and they're like, well, these bugs, they got to get smashed. It's all, it's all important in all the life cycle. Yep. And, you know, but I, I do put, promote Drupal right at the top there where it's like, we've got to okay. get people here first. For customers well, and developers uh, and new talent and new contributors. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You are yeah. you are correct. You can't you can't get new people there if it's not promoted. All right, I'm changing my answer. I'm changing my answer <laughs> from out, out of the box to promote Ooh. Drupal. See, I, this is a tough <laughs> question. Whoever answered this question is tough. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, all They're of all them. Important. Um, all, important. all of them. All right. Uh, I think we are out of time now. So thanks everyone for coming. It's been really fun. Um, and I will hop over now to the closing session. Thank so, you, Gabor. Yeah. Thank you for being our coordinator. Thank you so coordinator. Much. Yes, thank, thank you, you Gabor. I'm so sorry to get my slides in five minutes before the presentation. <laughs> <laughs> so nice to see y'all. I miss you. Oh. Bye. 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 Bye.